What's up everybody, it's Soren Baker, Mira Hemi. and today on The Great Debaters, we're going to get into some EPMD. Y'all like the strictly business? What about unfinished business? Get ready. Alright Amir, so today on The Great Debaters, we're going to look at EPMD's unfinished business, the best three songs in this album. This album came out in 89, a great year for rap, and... It's the follow-up to Strictly Business, one of the best albums of 88, which means it's one of the best albums of all time. And this really showed that EPMD had a lot of momentum and they were gonna be a force, which mm -hmm. they certainly were and remain for those that know anything about rap. So Amir, when you were first getting into this album, EPMD second, what did you think about it? <clears throat> um, so, yeah, man. Uh, unfinished business. I had heard Strictly Business years before I had actually heard this one, so okay. I had to kind of revisit Strictly Business before listening to this. So I just kind of wanted to uh, just have a, like a refresher to go from you know uh, first second album. And Unfinished Business. I mean, to start an album off, and this is just one of my picks. With so what you're saying, I was especially happy because. Uh, as you should know, my favorite rapper is Ice Cube, and listening to Kill It Will, hearing Jackin' for beats, and hearing all the f amazing production that he had jacked, um, pun intended, so what you're saying, when I heard that, I was like, oh, nice. Because this beat, honestly, this is one of my favorite singles in their whole discography. I think it's just incredible. Just the beat alone is it's just... It's one of my favorite beats of all time, actually. Dude, it's, it's, it's so phenomenal. Good. And to start off like that, you're like, damn, well, there's no way you're going to keep up with that, because how can you? The standard is so high. But uh, so what you're saying, just production alone, it, it catapults it in the top three all day. And then just what they're saying, too, I really like it, too. They're, they're you know, sticking their chest out. They're bragging a little bit. Like, they're saying, you know, uh, they thought we'd fold, but 30 days later, the LP went gold. So what you're saying, I really like that line. <clears throat> Uh, the it's employees great. of the year were back to work. We, you took, or we took time off while the rappers got jerked. I like that one too. I mean, there's just a lot of just cool lines in the in the song. I also really like the chorus too. Uh, it's just, just honestly, this song is just so great. And I just really like how they started off and were bragging a little bit. So, so what you're saying, you know what I mean? And then they continue the album. And then they go into like their other themes and concepts and some other bragging songs too. But this one, I just really like how they just came out the gate with this type of track. Well, this is also one of my picks. It's one of my favorite beats of all time. And I love the fact that this is the introduction really of DJ Scratch as oh, yeah. being part of the group. And he his uh, performance on here is phenomenal. And that was something that was really exciting to me because I knew who he was and to see him getting his shine in the spotlight was phenomenal. So I was very excited about that. And then the lyrics were very visual, very braggadocio. I love the line that Amir said about 30 days later to LP1 Gold as well. You know, brothers on my jack for the way I hold a piece of steel. Like there's so many clever, uh, memorable lines, employees of the year, you're able back to work, all these different things that go throughout the whole song where it's just a highlight of lyrics, it's a highlight of sonics, it's a highlight of scratching, it's a highlight of everything that you want. And it was just phenomenal. I really like the video too. Mm. The videos usually don't have too much of an effect uh, on whether or not I like a song, but I did like the enhancement of, you know, having a microphone in a box, having a jock strap in a box, the the monk hats to where it was like kind of weird and I know I talked to Dre from Dos Effects and he had told me one time that this kind of inspired or influenced them doing their sewer videos and their sewer motif because of this video so that was kind of cool to confirm that because I had always I was always curious and uh, Dre from Dos Effects shot him out confirmed that for me so that was awesome but this song man just to start an album it was one of those rare times in my life because I literally would only listen to albums straight through. I would never stop or rewind or any of that because I wanted to listen to every song equally. But this was one of those where I was very tempted to like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me listen to that again. 
But thankfully it was a single, so I didn't have that worry. And then when I was with my friends, they definitely played this song more than any other song in the album. So, you know, that was a blessing. Yeah, I know, as they should, because it's just so <laughs> incredible. But yeah, man, um, moving on to my second pick here. Um, I'm gonna go with Jane 2. Mm. Jane 2. And um, on the first, on our first um, album where we picked, you know, our top three with Trippy Business, um, on that one I didn't have Jane as the pick, which I obviously liked the song, but I had, you know, a few songs ahead of that one for sure. On this one, on the sequel, I don't know, I really like the beat on it just a lot. Just, I really do. It's nothing really too flashy. I guess it's just in my groove, and I just think it's just great. And I just love how E or uh, Eric and Parrish are just, you know, going back and forth. And Parrish is basically, you know, he's calling Eric and saying, you know, I got a story, you know, come over. But then he ends up telling him the story over the phone. <laughs> he's like, I call you 1015, well, maybe 1022. It's funny how, like, <clears throat> artists will say like a random time to just make it rhyme or you know to to be different or whatever they're trying to do so i always found that interesting with the 10 15 10 22 but then he's basically saying you know he's at the club he's doing his dance he's trying to see the girls and then he sees this girl and it's funny to me how just some alcohol and a whitney houston haircut is enough to make him forget who jane was because <laughs> at first she had the anita baker baker haircut so I was like, really? Like, you don't remember the person who said you need to be bigger, stronger, faster? So then when she... He overdid it, Holmes. <laughs> so, so then when uh, Jane says that to him after, you know, he does his business, he's like, oh, no, it couldn't be the J to the A to the N to the E. You know, I always like when, when artists will call back to earlier songs or career, and that's another reason why I always listen to things in order, because you'll miss little things like that, or you'll miss just so many callbacks to earlier things in their careers or discography. Right. And that's why I think it's very important. So I tried my best since I'm, you know, didn't grow up with all these albums. But uh, Jane 2, I really liked, and I like how, you know, uh, they kept the series going. And probably people who listen to Unfinished Business at the time, they're like, oh, this is a recurring theme. Maybe we'll see it on their next. Maybe we'll see it on their next, which they did. So uh, Jane 2 is my second pick. Uh, that's not my second pick or any of my picks for that matter, but it's a great song and I really am a fan of how they continued and made that a staple of what they did because I just think it adds a certain level of continuity and it, you know, pushes their imaginations to how they can keep this thing going and keep it interesting. It's like a trapped in the closet R. Kelly style, like before, way before that, of course. Mm -hmm. But since it's not one of my picks, one of my other picks is Get the Bozak. And I love that song, one, because of the beat, which we later see with Get At Me Dog with DMX. So I was always partial to the beat, but then also, I, as I've talked about before, uh, you know, I like it when there's a little bit of coding going on, and you know, as I've mentioned before, with Jim Browski with Boogie Down Productions and the Jungle Brothers, and then Bozak with EPMD, just different ways to you know, refer to different things. I always thought it was hilarious. But I also like the fact that on this song, maybe it's the beat or maybe it's uh, something, it, it just seemed like it made them very focused and very driven to be lyrically super sharp and to really be, you know, disrespectful, arrogant, and chest thumping like I think a lot of the best braggadocio rap does and I think Get the Bozak is a prime prime example of that and it just works so well with the Sonics man I love it that's another good one and, and to start off the album it had you know so what you say in Total Chaos Get the Bozak Jane 2 those four I really liked uh, back to back uh, to start the album off my last pick is um, <laughs> Nick Knack Paddywhack which mm. I still, you know, they say that phrase so many times in their albums, so it's always like, I don't know why I always laugh at it, don't know why. <laughs> but they named the song Nick Knack Paddywhack, and obviously this was the sample far before California Love used it. Um, and I had heard California Love, you know, on the radio before I even liked rap music, just as I was a kid, so when I heard this, I was like, oh, 
this came out before Dre, so that's interesting. So yeah, I was younger, but anyways, this song also had K Solo on it. And at first, I wasn't that crazy about K Solo's verse. Didn't care for it. I'd say like the first two listens, I didn't. And then it wasn't until probably like the third listen, I was like, oh no, I, I like this verse, and it's my favorite verse of the song now. It just took a, a couple listens. I really like the way he was flowing. He had a long verse, uh, and he starts to spell things out towards the end, which you know he ended up being known with the spellbound and other stuff like that. But um, he also misspells bird, which was which was very interesting and, and funny. Uh, and how things, you know, just get released without people like double checking them or or whatever. But um, no, I really like K Solo's verse a lot. I thought just to 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 jump on someone else's track and yeah. to really give it the treatment that K Solo gave it, that's really putting yourself on a big stage and people are going to be expecting stuff when your solo comes out because no pun intended. Because now they're like, oh, well, this is the guy who destroyed it on Knickknack Paddywhack and right. then other songs that come from DMD. But um so he had my favorite verse and then I think Eric and Parrish also did great. Uh I also had Parrish by my second favorite verse on it. But also the chorus was interesting because they kept trying to pass the microphone but then they deny it and they'd be like, we'll give him the microphone and then they'd rap so it was like kinda interesting. Um, it took a couple listens for me to understand what the heck was going on, <laughs> but uh, Nick Knack Paddywhack, man, that's my third, and uh, I really like the introduction and, and the spotlight that they gave K Solo was really good. I uh, agree with all of that, but my third pick is going to be the big payback. Ooh. Now that one, again, this this album, I realized that the beats really drove my picks for these three because these are my three favorite beats and my three favorite produced songs because of the feel of all of them and I think the big payback kind of foreshadows a little bit of what we're going to see with business as usual because it's kind of this story a caper a little bit of a crime <laughs> rhyme going on a little bit that we get a lot more of with business as usual and I just like the the force and the focus of it again. I think the this get the Bozak and so what you're saying just have the most focused, most precise everything. Sonics, delivery, rhymes, uh, flow through as far as you know. Even though Jane, of course, has the the subject matter, mm -hmm. I still think that these three in particular. They're just the tightest songs on every level of everything. And we get a little bit, even though Jane is what they're most known for, we get a little bit of the storytelling on here with the big payback and just the beat, man. It's just, the song is just crazy to me. And I just always liked it and I was glad and pleasantly surprised that they ended up making a video for it and getting NWA in it because um, I really didn't think that this was a song they were going to end up making a single because mm -hmm. of, you know, they had the Jane, which I thought they were going to, you know, promote more. And then they also had like songs about dancing, songs about drunk driving. They had just all these different things that were going on that I thought that maybe trying to think business minded, they might try to push that might cross them over. But this is why EPMD remained rooted in the hardcore hip hop because they went with Big Payback as the video, which I was always very appreciative for because it came out, at least when I saw it, it was much, much later than So What You Saying. So I was glad to see that. It was a great video, man. I was stoked to see that video too because seeing NWA there and EPMD and just the visuals and the gun range and just everything, I was like, this is dope. So I was very happy. And I wonder what people were thinking in 89 or 90 whenever that video released. Because the album was 89, but the video may have came later. Um, I really wonder what people were thinking. Well, but, uh, I didn't... It's great. I don't know if I just happened to miss Rap City and your own TV raps those days, but I didn't really see it that often. Hmm. Uh, whereas So What You're Saying was on, on a regular basis. Uh, the Big Payback, I don't remember it being on nearly as often. But I do remember seeing it several times and always liking it and again just being pleasantly surprised and this was also in the era right where I think the split really happened to where 
the animosity between the East and the West got really, the seeds were being planted and really were about to fester. So this was kind of the last uh, parts of that before the West Coast really started dominating rap. And, you know, that's unfortunate as well because obviously both people from all parts of the country have made incredible rap music. And, you know, I guess maybe subliminally I liked the unity that we saw NWA being in the video, even though that didn't affect the early listens of the album because yeah. the video wasn't there. But anyway, before we get into a deep dive into all that, <laughs> those are my three picks. You guys got Amir's three picks. Be sure to hit us up in the comment section, like, subscribe, and share to both Unique Access Entertainment and Rapping and Snacking on YouTube, both of us. We guys appreciate your support. I'm Soren Baker. I'm Amir Amy. The Great Debaters, y'all. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. A 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. It would be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV back for that WA? Yo MTV is just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. There's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.